So the game I'm playing is, if I have a function f, is there some way I could turn that into a power series? We've just seen how to do it if your function is related to the geometric power series somehow. What would you do in general? For instance, e to the x, sine of x, geometric power series really doesn't apply to those two series. So what we can do instead is, we could take a look back to Taylor polynomials. What do we have there? Well, what we have is we're gonna have some center x zero, and we have a procedure which takes our derivatives. We're gonna evaluate that derivative at the center, divide by k factorial, and that's gonna give us the k Taylor coefficient. So if I get enough of these Taylor coefficients, we could just load up powers of x minus the center, and then that's gonna give us a polynomial. Now, with that procedure, I could just let the highest degree run off to infinity, and what you'll do is we'll get a whole sequence of these Taylor coefficients, and then we can attach a power series to that. Okay, so where we were attaching a bunch of these coefficients to a polynomial, as you go off to infinity, you just attach the coefficients now to a power series. Okay, so that's our first step. Next step is gonna be, well, what happens if I have a function defined by a power series? So for instance, my f of x equal to some going from n zero to infinity, cn x minus x zero to the n on some interval. Well, what's gonna happen here is, well, you can't get away from your Taylor coefficient formula. These cn's are actually gonna be equal to what you would have gotten had you started with the function and just cranked your series out using these. So this is giving us some sort of uniqueness. If I can get a function defined by a power series, we have to have these Taylor coefficients coming into the picture. Okay, and the way we see this is just the usual trick we did for Taylor polynomials. Take enough derivatives, you evaluate x equal to your center, and then you just divide by k factorial. Okay, what do we have? Definition, f has derivatives of all orders at our point x zero, which means I can take as many derivatives as I want. We're gonna define this gadget here, the series, and going from zero to infinity. Okay, we're gonna take n derivatives of f, evaluate at x zero, divide by n factorial, multiply by x minus x zero raised to the nth power. We're gonna call this the Taylor series of f centered at x equal to x zero. So note, this is just your Taylor polynomial, and now we're just gonna let the top part run off to infinity x equals zero, we call it the Maclaurin series for f. Same idea, taking the Maclaurin polynomial for f of some degree, letting the degree run off to infinity. Okay, so let's look at an application. Suppose I have f of x equal to one plus x raised to the 50th power. If I wanted to expand this, what would we do? We would go to Pascal's triangle, and then you do your business of, you have one, 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 I add the two above it, I get one, two, one, add the two above each of those, one, three, three, one. Okay, for this, we're gonna have to do 50 rows, that's gonna be an exercise in tedium. So the shortcut is gonna be, we'll just form Taylor series. Okay, well, if I go with x equals zero, it'll be a Maclaurin series. So, let's take a look. F of zero is gonna be equal to one. If I take the derivative, I'm gonna get 50, one plus x to the 49th power, second derivative, 50, 49, one plus x to the 48th, and so on. So, what are we gonna do? Our coefficients are gonna be a zero equals one. A one is just gonna be equal to what we get when we put a zero in here, so I get a 50. Second derivative, it's gonna give me, when I put a zero in, 50 times 49, and then I have to divide by two factorial, so it's just two. Then for the third one, 50, 49, 48, and we divide by three factorial, so that's gonna give us our third one, and then I just load them into the series as so. So one plus 50x, 50, 49 over two, times x squared, and so on. And now since this one is actually gonna be a polynomial, when we get to the top term, which is gonna be x to the 50, we can stop. So this is really a polynomial problem, it's not a series problem, but that's gonna be the idea. If I wanna get a handle on the coefficients of this thing, all I need to do is take a lot of derivatives, divide by k factorial. So, if someone hands you a function, we have a recipe for cooking up its Taylor series. 
The only hitch is that Taylor series may not agree with the original function. So what can happen? Well, in one instance, what can happen is you get all of your Taylor coefficients equal to zero. That's going to mean that the series itself is going to be zero, but this will happen for functions which are not exactly zero. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a function that's extremely flat at zero. No matter how you try to approximate at zero, you're going to get zero back. So what's happening? You try the tangent line, you get zero. You try the best quadratic, you get zero. You try the best cubic, it throws back zero, and so on and so on. So the idea is the Taylor coefficients are just not enough to catch what's happening with the actual function. Okay, so to finish, we have a result that lets us know what situations where we're okay. So first, remember, the remainder function, this is going to be defined for each n as, I take my function, I take my nth Taylor polynomial, take their difference, and then what's left over is going to be the error in the estimation by using the Taylor polynomial. Theorem says, you take your remainder functions, you fix your x, you let your n go off to infinity. If you get that to be equal to zero for all x on the interval where you're defined, then two things are gonna happen. The first is gonna be the Taylor series that you're using is gonna converge, and then the second thing is gonna be it will be equal to the f of x that you started out with. So if we have this happening, which is gonna be for most of the functions we look at, things are gonna be great. One more thing, rather than leave this as just some sort of abstract exercise, let's run our remainder theorem through a concrete example. So what do I have? We have the geometric power series. It's gonna converge on an interval of minus one to one. So our function f is gonna be one over one minus x. The nth Maclaurin polynomial is gonna be one plus x plus x squared all the way up through x to the n. And we can rewrite this as one minus x to the n plus one over one minus x. So our remainder is just gonna be the difference of these two, and that's gonna give me x raised to the n plus one over one minus x. Okay, to use our theorem, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna fix an x, and then we're gonna take the limit as n goes off to infinity. So here, x is gonna be fixed between minus one and one. Then we're gonna take the limit, so what's gonna happen? Here I have one minus x in the bottom. That's just a constant, so we can pull that out of the limit. And then here we're looking at something like x to the n plus one. Think of x being, say, one half. Then the shape of this graph is gonna be, okay, for one half to the x, and note the x here has nothing to do with this x. One half to the x is gonna be shaped like this. So one half to the n, as I go out to infinity, is gonna get driven down to zero. So, the limit here is going to go off to zero. What's the conclusion? Well, the first thing is going to be that our series, so if I let this Pn of x, let the x go off to infinity, our usual geometric power series, our remainder theorem says that function is going to converge. We already knew that, but this gives us confirmation of it. The second part is going to be not only does it converge, but it converges to the function you started with. So our geometric power series is going to converge to this. Again, we already knew that, but our remainder theorem gives us confirmation. So that's how you use your remainder theorem.